Are you a fan of ladybirds, Dad? Yeah, yeah, I am actually. I've just found one here whilst rummaging through the undergrowth looking for insects. That's a seven spot ladybird, one of the most common species of ladybird we have in this country. And isn't it beautiful? Quite interesting animals, the ladybirds, you know. They're a member of the order Coleoptera, so the beetles, and they're actually toxic. They release this substance called reflex blood, which is a yellowish liquid, um, which isn't toxic to us. It tastes a little bit bitter if you want my personal opinion. Um, but to a, something like a bird, which is, would have been one of the predators of the ladybirds, um, it probably doesn't taste very nice at all. Now, toxicity in nature is relatively common, and understanding how it might have evolved isn't actually that difficult, Dad, believe it or not. But what is a little bit more curious, Dad, is how those toxic um, compounds can become correlated with these bright colours, this warning coloration. Now there's a fancy word for warning coloration in the animal kingdom. Do you know what it is? Um, not often. Incorrect. It's called aposematism. I'd never have got that. Right, aposematism, and that's warning coloration, which is thought to signal toxicity. Um, and those patterns seem to be relatively simple, like this spotty pattern on the ladybird. Oh. We have lift off. Excuse me, I'm going to have to go and find another one. Oh, find another one. But I've got to be careful with it this time, so there it is. Beautiful specimen again. So now what were we talking about, Dad? Oh yeah, we were talking about the evolution of warning coloration, weren't we? Because right. that's where the paradox lies. It's very easy to understand how toxicity might have evolved, but how warning coloration might have evolved with it is another kettle of fish, because surely, if you evolve bright colours, well then, you're not going to be camouflaged, are you? You're going to be the exact opposite. So that means a predator will eat you, and that means those genes won't be passed on to the next generation. So how on earth can warning coloration evolve? Well, there's multiple explanations. <laughs> there's multiple explanations for this. The first one is just by chance. So perhaps, you know, those first animals that were brightly colored um, just weren't eaten by predator. They were able to breed and that's how those genes were passed on. That's okay, but really, are we just going to leave it down to chance? That's a bit of a rubbish explanation, isn't it? Actually, no, it's rubbish. Let's forget about it. Another fantastic... Got it! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so the best explanation comes from one of the greatest um, evolutionary biologists of all time, Sir Ronald Fisher, who's also a great statistician. And his mechanism is called the family group effect. Now, for the moment, I'm going to say goodbye to that ladybird now. I've had enough of it. Bye! And I'm going to explain the family group effect using um, some counters which I got for my Ludo set. So imagine this everybody, we've got a population of green beetles here, haven't we? We've made them green because that, that way they'll probably be camouflaged. And the evolution of camouflage isn't that difficult to understand really, is it Dad? You know, yeah. an animal matches its background, it won't get eaten, those camouflage genes will get passed on to the next generation. No problem in understanding that. So let's say then, a mutation arose in this population of camouflaged green beetles, which meant that we had offspring which were red, not camouflaged at all. So this is the next generation now. Now, these red beetles have never been seen by a wild bird in this habitat before. But the birds are hungry, they fancy a meal, so they'll grab one anyway. Now, that unfortunate beetle doesn't get the best end of the deal. It dies, unfortunately. However, the birds will learn, they'll associate that red colour with the toxic taste, which means its brother or sister over here is doing quite well, really. That's why it's called the family group effect. So any other individuals with the same mutation as the one that died will eventually survive. So over time, the that gene for warning coloration starts to spread within the population. And then, equally co-evolving alongside that, we've got a population of birds, very clever birds, that have learned to avoid that red warning coloration. And therefore, that is a pretty good visual defense strategy. 
So how about that then, Dad? Have you learned something? Oh, I think so, yeah. Oh, that's all I wanted, really. Have you brought the Ludo board? Oh, yeah, do you want to fancy a game? game? Oh, yeah, come on, yes. See you next time. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give this video a like and more importantly, subscribe. The button's just down there or just beside me there. I've also recently got a brand new Facebook page, so make sure you give that a like. The link is just below me right now um, to receive all the latest updates on my wildlife adventures. So for the meantime, I'll see you next time.